Kyle Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play this video and talk about things that are going on and better explain what's going on and talk about things that I think that are being done right and or done wrong. Here we go. Gotcha, man. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Take care, all right? Yeah. Hey, what, what happened? I was on a long trip today. I was up from Savannah. Gotcha. And, uh, do you need rescue to check you out again? No, I think I'm fine. You don't have any pain anywhere? No, it hurt my chest for a bit, but it's fine, and all I got is this. Okay. I think I just need to get a toad and stuff. Hey, it's Garrett, that 166. Okay. Hey, tell 166. Oh, shit, man. Rescue's in route. You can 10 Woo! 10 so you just, you say you're coming from Savannah? Yeah, I just took a drive. And gotcha. I, I can't even tell you what time I left. Where do you live at? At the beaches. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right. You don't take any medication or anything like that? You just tired? Uh, I do take some medications, but it's, it, I just got tired. I haven't slept much lately, but okay. gotcha. I'm on normal medications. And yeah, yeah. All right. Do you have your ID on you? Yes, I do. Were you asleep whenever they rolled up on the, were you still unconscious? No. Are you okay? What well, happened is, is this your normal? No, this is, I'm shaking up, officer. I got you. Oh, I almost come, died. Come on. I was sleeping. And uh, don't don't have a seat right there because I don't want anybody rearing me. And, but you, but if you want to have a seat on the ground, then that's fine. Uh, did you, uh, aside from naturally being asleep, did you feel like you got knocked unconscious or anything like that? I don't know. All of a sudden, I heard bang. I looked up and I saw everything glass was going crazy and stuff. I got. You. I just went nuts. Man. I got you. What happened? Did you get out then, or? I didn't know what happened, man. Okay. I got you. I was All completely right. sleeping. It just hit okay. me hard. I understand. I got you. All right. Woo. I got you. All right. Okay. HQ, I tell 166. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't hear it. Did you say FHB's in route? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so... Um, I was expecting some type of um, description from the agency or whatever. This comes from uh, Jackson Sheriff's Office. Uh, I'm sorry, not Jackson. Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, uh, Florida. Um, the video, of course, you know, it shows it was uh, 526 of um, 2020, and um, on their YouTube page. Uh, which they released this on August 9th of 2022. Uh, all it says is, this JSO body-worn camera video is of the tragic events that unfolded in the early morning hours of 52620. That's it. That's, that's all it fucking says. Um, so I will have to do a quick search to uh, figure out what the background on all this is. Obviously, we see... A uh, person has been involved in some type of automobile accident, and there's something going on where the guy's acting a little off. He's got a bit of a an altered uh, mental status, I guess you could say. He's just not acting right, um, and that could just be from the stress of being involved in a wreck, uh, or it could be something else. Uh, but I'll go ahead and hit play. <laughs> lost his mind on me and tried to attack me. Stop! Stop! Stop what you're doing! Stop! 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 
Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Stop! Oh shit. Okay. Okay. Everything calm down. Oh shit. Holy fuck. I got one incapacitated on the ground right now for my medical. Two shots fired. Two good hits. Thomas, he's got 1052 for rescue. Before Hodges.
No, Dar 166, I'm 77, sir. Everybody be careful on the way here. Okay, so um, I'll pause it right there. Uh, looking at uh, firstcoastnews.com. Um, this is a uh, May 26, 2020, talks about this incident. Um, the suspect is 61-year-old John Allen Dunaway III. It just talks about what you just saw. Um, that's it. That's all it says in this article. Okay, so that was uh, completely nothing there. I don't see... Well, here's first, first Coast News coming from August of 2022. Um, release video showing police involved shooting. Um, again, it just repeats um, what happened. Yeah, it's just basically summarizing what you just saw in the video. Yeah, so not much there. Yeah, the article had nothing in it. Um, yeah, so no idea what the fuck this dude's problem was. Um, he, like, came out of nowhere with that. I mean, that was very sudden. So we'll go back to the beginning when this occurs. Glass was going crazy and stuff. I got it. just went nuts. Man. I got you. What happened? Did you get out then, or I didn't know what happened, man. Okay, I got you. I was All completely right. sleeping. It just hit me hard. I understand. I got you. All right. Woo. I got you. All right. Hey, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Did you say FHB's in, FHB's in route? So, so far, everything is kind of normal, I guess you could say. A see who's been involved in some type of accident. He appears to be a little shook up, right? Like a lot of people who've been involved in accidents act a little shook up. They act like in a way that they're not normal. Like you just came across them at work or they're in an office setting or, you know, you're in line with them at the restaurant or, or whatever, you know, they're not in, they're not in their normal headspace. Like they've just almost to them, died in something, and so they're shook up a lot. Uh, there's nothing going on to me that indicates there might be something wrong with this guy. Uh, when he talks about the medication part, that starts making me think that there's a possibility this dude could be uh, under the influence of something, and now um, it's a potential uh, criminal case in the sense that he could be operating a motor vehicle while under the influence of something. But other than that, like it seems kind of normal.
statistic theory again. He just lost his mind on me. Stop! 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 What you doing? Stop! All right. So the first Texas deployment he was able to achieve NMI. You can barely hear the taser going on. You hear it cycling, but it's not very loud. Stop! Stop what you're doing right now! Stop! Stop what you're doing right now! What are you doing? I don't know! He rescued theory again. He just lost his mind on me. Stop! 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 stop what now when he cycles the taser, it's a lot louder. So this tells us that there is a, a disconnect. Um, I would say most likely with him rolling around, he has broke one of the wires and now we're not able to achieve NMI because there's no good uh, connection to the body. One of the wires is broken. Officer initiates a reload on the taser.
the suspect here, he he's brought this upon himself. He attacked the officer, came at him, announced that he had a gun, and then went towards the vehicle. What's he going to do with that gun once he gets it? Is he going to put it on show and tell, hold it up, and talk like a game show host, and... Well, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have here? We have the Glock 17. Da, 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 da. No, fuck no, he's not going to do that. No reasonable person is going to believe that he's going to pull this gun out for show and tell and talk about it. A reasonably minded person is going to believe that this dude is going to get the gun and use it against this officer. Any reasonably minded person would say that based off what just transpired. So absolutely, 100%, this officer is justified in using deadly physical force against this guy, even though this guy has not yet produced a gun, and this guy has his back turned to him, and he's leaning down into the car. 100% justified use of force. He fires into the guy, the guy falls down, gets the desired effect. Oh, fuck you! Thank you, stop firing, stop firing, stop! 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 Stop what you're doing! Stop! Stop right now! Fuck. Oh shit. Okay. Alright, so Listen to the breathing noises in the background. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Everything calm down. So, that's not a good sign for that guy. <laughs> uh, he's starting to go into what is known as animal breathing. Everything calm down. This officer is gathering himself, um, giving him um, uh, himself uh, verbal affirmations that you know everything's calmed down. He's he's breathing. He's trying to get uh, more oxygen uh, going to his brain, uh, calming himself down, getting that heartbeat lowered, uh, so that forebrain can start to take over more power um, than, than what it already has. Holy fuck. Oh shit. Oh shit. I got one incapacitated on the ground right now performing medical. Two shots fired. Two good hits. So I think that might have been a wallet he pulled off the guy. Ten four. So we see that he. It, it appears as though he uh, passed the guy down, makes sure he doesn't have a weapon on him, or um, even looks like he, he pulls him forward uh, to him a little bit, and looks like he could be clearing under his chest and tummy area to see that uh, there's not a gun laying under him. And then beyond that, he does not cuff him initially. Um, he goes back to his car, uh, I guess he realizes he has gloves on him. He puts gloves on. Um, multiple times he adjusts those gloves while they're on. 
but then he does not go hands-on with this guy. Um, I do firmly believe that uh, after people have been shot, uh, even though they appear to be incapacitated, uh, they should still be cuffed because, especially, um, more importantly, if it's involving pistols. So pistols are not, um, they're not the greatest, right? Like They still work, but when you compare them to a rifle, you can see that they suck. Um, in fact, there's a lot of people out there walking around today who've been shot with pistols and they're still alive. Pistols just don't do that great of a job. They still work, but they're just not that great. Um, lots of times where people have been shot with pistols and they appear to be incapacitated and then all of a sudden they're no longer incapacitated. One of the more famous uh, cases uh, of this is the Miami-Dade FBI shootout back in the 1980s. FBI went to uh, arrest a couple of bank robbers. They did a felony traffic stop on them. Uh, they crashed. Gunfight started. Uh, one of the bank robbers during the beginning of this gunfight took a round to the head. He was shot in the head and it temporarily knocked him out. <laughs> he later woke up during the middle of this gunfight got out of his car, went back to one of the FBI agents' vehicle and attempted to take off in it. His partner, on the other hand, he took multiple hits during this gunfight. The very first hit he took was actually a fatal hit. It was not immediately incapacitating, but it would if that was the only wound that he got, it would have proved to be fatal eventually. Um, it just did not immediately stop him. He took that hit to the side and it landed into his heart area. And then he continued to fight and took more rounds, took more hits, took multiple handguns, and even took some pellet from shotgun. He was able to go on, continue the fight, murder two FBI agents, and seriously physically injure others before him and his partner were finally taken out. Um, by another uh, FBI agent who had been wounded during this gunfight. Um, and their toxicology reports came back with nothing in their system. They weren't on any kind of drugs or anything. They just had a, a will to fight. Um, and this was also the, the catalyst behind um, the FBI wanting more than just 9mm and that in turn, gave birth to the 40th Smith & Wesson. So, uh, people shot with pistols most definitely need to be handcuffed. Uh, if that person were to wake back up and continue to try and fight, it's a whole lot harder for them to fight with their hands behind their back. Imagine trying to have a pillow fight with someone and you've got your hands cuffed to the front and they've got their hands cuffed to the back. Who do you think is getting hit in the face more with a pillow? cuff people after they've been shot. <clears throat> it seems to me that he is unsure on what to do at this point. Um, this could be a, a, a sign of a lack of good reality-based training with uh, follow-through on what to do after you shoot. So a lot of the training out there um, can end right after the shots have been fired. That completes the exercise. All right, you shot the bad guy, you saved the day. Let's do another one or let's go home. Um, there is no, sometimes there is no um, follow through with that. There is no um, scanning and uh, topping off and taking cover and doing approach and cuffing the person up and, and doing radio communications and and all that. There's usually sometimes, uh, sometimes there's no follow up to that. It's just shoot and go, um, go on to the next evolution, next drill. So this could be a sign that he has not had enough uh, reality based training scenarios with good follow through uh, from beginning to complete end, where it's a fully scripted role play event, and he gets to go through the exact scenario like it would be in real life all the way up into the point of him being walked away from the scene and 
the supervisor taking his, his body camera um, and the supervisor, you know, separating them from everyone else and then going through that process as well. So it just seems like to me that he's a little bit unsure of what to do at this point. Like he knew, like he trained good up to the shooting point. Like he Johnny on the spot with that. Like he did good with that. He did good with the taser uh, reload. He did a great reload under stress on that. Um, did all that stuff great. Now it's to the point of like he's he's got a, a mental Rolodex, and each page he's just keep flipping through the pages like uh, uh, I haven't seen this one before. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? So it just seems like he's stuck in that that Rolodex, just going really quick, going through pages, and he can't come across something that he can relate to. Like, all right, this is what I do after this point. JTB eastbound, about three. And his backup, like this dude passed the scene up pretty damn far. Like, and he's got his lights on too. Like, he couldn't have stopped before the lights. So, I don't know what this dude's motivation is for uh, completely passing everything up and parking all the way the fuck down here. Um, he may have had a good reason for it. Uh, what that reason is, I, I don't know. Maybe he thought this was a better positioning. Uh, don't know. But I thought it was kind of funny that he. Completely pass them up, even though he's got his lights on. And he's just coming to the top. Airtel 166, 1054. Watch out, secure. Wait here. I think this is where we left. Might be careful on the way here. Savannah. Yeah. All right. So that other officer um, kind of gave him the signal to, hey, shut up. And that's that's perfectly fine. Um, this officer is a citizen of the United States, and he still gets to enjoy um, his constitutional rights. And one of his constitutional rights is not to self-incriminate. Um not that, not that he's done anything wrong at all. He has done nothing wrong. He's done everything right. But he still has the right not to self-incriminate just like everybody else. He has a camera on. The other officer has a camera on. This officer has been in the fight. He has had to fight for his life. So that means that the fight, flight, freeze syndrome has kicked in. There are psychological and physiological changes that occur when that happens. One of them being is a huge adrenaline dump. A huge one. And adrenaline, if you've never experienced an adrenaline dump, then, then I can't really explain in a way that you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But if you've ever been to a haunted house and you've had the the shit scared out of you. You ever been over, you know, as a kid to a friend's house for a Halloween party and like your friend's dad went outside and put on a werewolf mask and came up to the window and slapped that window real hard and scared the shit out of you all. Um, ever been walking through a cemetery at night and, you know, people were going to play a joke and they jumped out in front of you. Uh, at home, someone jumped out of the corner to scare you, you know, put a fake snake in your bed, been in a car wreck, something like that. If you've ever had the fucking shit scared out of you like that, then you have most likely experienced an adrenaline dump. If you've ever been in a car wreck, 
you've most likely experienced an adrenaline dump. If you've ever been in a fight, you've most likely experienced an adrenaline dump. When that happens, then you experience things like, or you can experience things like auditory exclusion. You can experience some type of um, time event distortion. Um, it may be hard for you right after the incident to recall in great detail the sequence of events as they occurred because you were so scrambled in your head from that adrenaline dump that you just cannot think clearly. You are, in essence, under the influence of a drug, and that drug is called adrenaline. Uh, you've got the jittery talks, you know, you're, you, you just cannot speak clearly. Uh, you may say things that are a little bit different. You could take someone who doesn't cuss or anything like that and put them through a life or death uh, stimulus kind of uh, uh, situation to, to stimulate that fight, flee, fight, flight, freeze response in a person. And it could be the old lady librarian and she could yell, ah, fuck, ah, shit. And you've never heard those words out of someone like that before. Um, so it can, can really make you say stuff that, you know, you ordinarily would not say or say things in a way that you would not say. So this officer is telling him, uh, don't, don't, don't talk. And that's a good thing because this guy could say something in a way that he normally doesn't say it. And that could look bad in the public court of opinion. It's not going to affect anything in a criminal case or anything like that, but it could cause uh, public opinion to sway in something, or um, it could maybe uh, lend some helping hand to the defendant's family um, or to the plaintiff's family uh, when they want to um, um, try and initiate a lawsuit, a wrongful death lawsuit or something like that. Uh, so, for example, if the officer said, yeah, I shot the motherfucker, well, I personally see nothing wrong with it, but um, in court of public opinion, uh, someone could try and twist words around and, and uh, you know, twist people's emotions around and be like, yeah, he called him a motherfucker. He, he wanted to kill him. He, did, he wasn't defending himself. He just, he was pissed at this guy. He... He wanted to get revenge on him. He, he murdered him. Or just, you know, how you say things, you know, can be used, can be used against you. You know, just like the Miranda warning says, anything you say can be, can will be used against you. And so immediately following a self-defense shooting, you should not immediately talk. You should not immediately release or make any statements in regards to that incident. Now, you may offer helpful hints and tips like um, you might not see it but if you look up under that car over there you'll see some expended casings or you may find a magazine over there um, but don't go into details of yeah I took cover over here and did mag change and, and then I pulled out and or leaned out and I acquired sights and uh, put sights on his chest and pull trigger like don't go into those details don't talk about that right after the incident. Wait until you've had time to decompress, come off of that drug, adrenaline, until you've had time to rest um, and be able to collect your thoughts on the matter um, and get legal representation because this is something that you will need representation for. Although this is, to me, a 100% justified no questions asked, shoot, like it is closed book, you still want that legal representation. Everyone needs legal representation in something like this, even the good guys. Because like I said, you could say things in a way that, um, you know, you didn't think about it and you said it the wrong way, and now that could be potentially used against you, even though you're 100% legal in everything that you did.
I'm out right now. Okay. I'm, okay, I'm going off. So he's telling him to turn off the body camera. That is a pretty standard thing with most agencies. Uh, once enough people are there to secure the scene, uh, and they remove that involved officer from the scene, uh, they go ahead and have them turn their camera off. There's nothing else for that camera to capture. There's nothing else of evidentiary value for them to be able to record. Uh, the camera gets turned off, and the officer gets to um, enjoy his constitutional rights. Uh, you know, he gets to have his privacy. He doesn't, you know, have to say anything out loud that could be captured on film and be potentially um, used against him. Uh, not much else to say about this video. I think that uh, he reacted well to this. I uh, did a great uh, reload on the taser. Did a pretty good, efficient reload on it. Um, and he acted uh, with uh, deadly physical force the way that he should have acted. Um, he did not hesitate um, and, and get in this long, drawn-out, um, don't make me tell you again kind of bullshit that you see so often in other videos. You know, sometimes some people just, they get into this mantra of, do it now, I'm not going to tell you again. Do it now, I'm not going to tell you again. Do it now, I'm not going to tell you again. Like, how many times are you going to fucking say that before that person kills you? So, he did the right thing. He, um, he took appropriate action against this guy who was threatening to kill him. Uh, no idea if there was a gun located in the vehicle or not. The article I tried to bring up um, didn't say anything about a gun being found. So it's a possibility that there was no gun involved in this incident at all, at least from the, the suspect's standpoint. Could be he was just, you know, threatening uh, that a gun was going to be there when in fact it wasn't. So this could be a simple case of suicide by police. It could be... Um, that um, the car accident that he was involved in, it could be that he tried to kill himself in a car accident and it failed. It did not work. And he was shook up. And then now uh, he may be thinking that he could try suicide by police since wrecking his car didn't work out for him. That could be a possibility. I don't know if that's the case or not. Um, it could be that he was wanted for something out of somewhere else and he knew that he's caught. He's probably going to be going away for a long time. And he, you know, he could have um, tried to um, do suicide by police or do something to make the officer get far enough away from him so that he could attempt an escape or something like that. I don't know. I have no idea why this guy did what he did. I haven't found any news articles explaining it or anything like that or giving an idea of what this dude's motive was. But... He clearly brought this shit upon himself. And, uh, yeah. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching.